Welcome to the Life Church. We're so excited to have you with us this morning. Let's go ahead and stand and worship. Open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is great to be in the house of Almighty God today. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. If you're watching online, we're so glad that you're with us. Why don't you just put that in the chat? Hallelujah. Fire emojis. We're glad to have you today with us also. You can be seated all across the building. Hey, for all those that are new here today, thank you so much for deciding to worship with us here at the Life Church. We're so glad that you're here. Can we give them a hand for being with us today, both in person and those that are watching online? Thank you so much. There's a connect card that we'd love for you to take out your phone right now. There's a digital QR code that's on the screen. Just love for you to take a moment, point your camera. You may have to zoom in just a tad bit. And uh, there will be a simple form. This is a great way for us to get to know you a little bit better. And we'll also be able to share a little bit about the Life Church. And we'd love for you to, to do that today uh, for we can, so we can be able to connect with you. Everybody say, I love to connect. Yeah, we want to connect with you. All right? I love technology. There's so many different opportunities and ways for us to be able to give at the Life Church, even in the middle of a pandemic, you all have been so faithful throughout your uh, giving, through your giving, your generosity. Uh, we just want to say thank you. We want to let you know there are many different ways that you can give today. You can give online at tlcdallas.com. You can also give through the Church Center app. You can also text to give. And today, on your way out, if you'd like to give in person, you can give on your way out. Everybody shout life groups. Life groups are back. They started back today. We are super excited that life groups are back and uh, and we're, we're very glad that all of you are already signing up for these life groups. We want you to go ahead and jump in. If you haven't signed up already, uh, you can do that in the Church Center app or at tlcdallas.com slash life groups. Everybody needs to be a part of at least one life group. There's something for you men, women, young people, young adults. There's a life group for you. So please, please check those out. And we're encouraging you to sign up and connect during this mini semester of life groups. Also want to let you know today we actually started First Steps. It started back today at 11 o'clock. We had a great time. If you missed step one, that's okay. You can show up next week at 11 o'clock. Just come a little early, and uh, you'll be able to catch step two uh, for, uh, uh, for next steps. And we'd love for you to be a part of that so that you can be able to discover your purpose and live the life that God has called you to live. So we want you to be a part of life groups. And it's also a way to be able to get and be a part of our dream team. Can all the dream teamers go whoop, whoop? Yeah, Dream Team makes it happen. We're very thankful for all of our Dream Team members. And the last thing I want to let you know is that this Wednesday night, everybody say Wednesday night. Pastor is going to be starting a new Bible study on the gift of the Spirit, and we'd love for everybody to be in the building, in, on, on campus, love for you to be a part of that. There's other things happening for kids, Kids Life, Lifeline. Uh, we'd love for you all to come and join us this Wednesday. Why don't we stand right now? I'm very thankful that the power of God is here in this place. We know that God wants to do something mighty and miraculous in every life in this place. You walked in here one way, but he wants you to leave changed and transformed. Why don't you worship with us? I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me. same God, it's never late, is working all things out, you're working all things out, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name.
true this morning. Oh God, we will praise your name. We will glorify your name all of our days. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, his spirit is here. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we go into a time of prayer, let's take our focus to Him this morning. I was praying about what God wants to talk to His people about this morning in prayer, and the word faith just came to my mind. And as we were singing that song last service and, and this service, I just there seems to be an overwhelming spirit of faith in this place. We sing about, yes, we will glorify him. Yes, we will praise him through the darkness. That when we don't understand God, we're standing in faith. Through COVID, through sickness, we're standing in faith. And we choose to praise him. We choose to glorify and magnify him. Though we don't know what the situation may hold, he does. For he is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are good, God. In Matthew chapter 9, I was talking with a few friends of mine this week, and, and they mentioned the woman that had the issue of blood. And Matthew 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 9 verse 20 says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years came behind him. She touched the hem of his garment. She crawled to get to him because she knew if only she could touch the hem of his garment, it could just be a little tiny thread that she could touch. She knew and she had the faith that she would be healed. It goes on to say in verse 22, but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith Thy faith hath made thee whole. This morning, I wonder if you can take that faith and maybe you're struggling with your faith this morning. Why don't you lift your hands to him and ask him, God, I want that faith. God, I want a renewed faith, God, or I'm going to use my faith, Lord, to touch that situation. Let's pray this morning together, oh God. Lord, we know that when we call upon the name of the Lord, you will hear us, God, and you will answer us, God. So we speak in faith this morning over every situation that needs your hand over every situation that needs your touch God over the bodies that are sick God over these COVID situations oh God we give them to you this morning we don't have to hold on to them God but we give them over to you knowing in good faith that you will comfort us and that you will heal us and you will bring your promises to pass in the name of Jesus we receive that gift of faith in the name of Jesus this morning hallelujah Jesus Oh, 
Speak that name. Speak that name all over this building. Come on, speak his name. Speak that name out. He's here today. He's here today.
where we are. If you want him to, he will come to where you are today. In the Old Testament, the way he communicated to Moses, he said, I'll be the I am. Whatever you need me to be, that's what I will be. That has not changed. He has the solution. He is the answer. He is the help. He is the guide. 
He is the direction. He is the strength. He is the support. He is the healing. He is whatever you need Him to be today. One more time, can we just lift Him up together? Come on, can we worship Him in a united way? Hallelujah. Somebody help me praise Him. Somebody online, help me praise Him right now. Lord, I'm thankful that you make a way where there seems to be no way. You prepare a table in the presence of our enemies, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see you all today. Welcome to the Life Church, especially all of our guests. We're glad to have you in the house today. Those watching online, we welcome you. Can we just welcome all of our guests right now? Amen. It's good to have my two, two linebackers right here back, back in church today. If anybody tries to mess with me, you're going to have to go through them. Amen. Love these guys. I'm going to be reading today from Mark 16. Pastor Matt mentioned it briefly, but this Wednesday night we're kicking off a new series on the gifts of the Spirit. And if, you've not, if you don't know what the gifts of the Spirit is then you might want to be here. Maybe you know about the gift, singular of the Spirit, but we're going to be talking about the gifts, the accompanying gifts of the Spirit and how they should be in operation in the church. And uh, I invite you to be here 7 o'clock Wednesday night. We had a wonderful first service today, and I don't typically talk about the first service, but uh, we, we had one young lady got baptized at the end of service, and she received the Holy Ghost right there. When she came up, then there were three other people who received the Holy Ghost for the first time. So for a total of four, come on, I think we need to, I think we need to celebrate that. We need to give God glory and honor. Thank you for pouring out your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do it in this service. Do it in our lives today. Amen. I'm thankful that Kaylee Dungan is going to be baptized at the end of this service today. Hallelujah. She received the Holy Ghost last Friday night, and she is ready. She is ready, and we're excited about that. It's good to have the thick pins with us and family joining to be a part of that today. Mark 16, verse 15. Mark 16 and 15. Here's what it says. I am I'm continuing the series that I started last Sunday titled Deep and Wide. Here's what Mark 16 and 15 says. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. See, what we're doing with Kaylee after service today, it's not just because, you know, she needs to make a public profession of her faith, but it's for the salvation of her soul. That's what, that's what happened in the first service when Sariah was baptized. It was for the salvation of her soul. It's not just going public with your faith. And uh, that, that is important. That's needed. But there is a work done when you obey the word of God. And if you've not been baptized, you can get baptized today. We're ready. We've got everything you need. Amen. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those that do what? Those that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. That's what believers do. That's what believers did in the New Testament. Amen. So if anybody here today, you brought a demon with you, we're putting that demon on notice. We're putting that demon on notice. That demon is in the presence of an authority that is higher that is more powerful. Hallelujah. They're going to cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Anybody here been filled with the Holy Ghost? Anybody speak with tongues when the Holy Ghost came? Well, that's what he said in Mark 16 that believers are going to do. They're going to speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. Now, we don't go around, you know, hunting for snakes. This isn't, this isn't something we're going to tempt God with. We know that when Paul was bitten by a serpent, he didn't die. He just shook it off in the fire. 
Why? Because he was a believer. Because God took care of him. And I believe if you just so happen to get bitten by a serpent, you can pray and your God will hear you. And the God who helped Paul can help you. Amen. But we're not breaking out boxes of snakes today. That's not of God. It's not of Shea either. <laughs> says that if you drink any, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. I love this. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. It's just a simple action. It's just a simple human action of making connection of, hey, I'm going to join my faith with your faith. And we're going to believe. And I'm going I'm I'm to touch your, your head. Why? Because that's where your, your brain is. That's where your mind is. That's where faith originates. So we, we lay our hands on, on people and pray a prayer of faith and they can recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven. This was his ascension. He had already Going through the death, the burial, the resurrection. He'd shown himself alive for 40 days with many infallible proofs, the Bible says. At this point, he was received up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. They went out. Who? The disciples, the believers. These signs shall follow the believers, right? They went out and they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Can the church say amen? I'm believing God to confirm his word today. I'm believing God to confirm his word today before we leave this place. You may be seated. Last Sunday, I introduced a, a two-week series called Deep and Wide, and I preached the first message last, last Sunday. And in that, that message, I really focused on our need to go deep, our need to go deep when it comes to spiritual things. And I talked about how that there are treasures, there are, there are precious metals, there are precious gems that are hidden in the earth. They're hidden out of sight. They're there beneath the surface. And if you want those treasures, you can get them, but you got to be willing to dig. You've got to be willing to go deep if you want to access those treasures that are there and that are available. Everybody else might not be interested in those treasures. Everybody else might be content to live on the surface level. But as believers, as children of God, there are treasures. There are great things that God has for us. There are anointings. There are ministries. There are, there, there's a move of the Holy Ghost that is available to us if we're willing to dig down deep. I talked about if you want to live on the animal level, you can live on the animal level where, you know, your God is your stomach and all you're doing is going around looking for your next meal. All you're doing is being driven by your, the, 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 the desires of your flesh and you can live on that, that animal level or, or you can live on the human level, but we also have the option today that we can tap in to the spirit level, we can begin to access the deeper things of God. And here's what has happened since the last quarter of last year. The Lord has indeed been calling this church deeper in relationship with him. And the reason this is so important is because people with deep spiritual roots are going to be able to withstand the heat of trials. People with deep, solid spiritual foundations will survive the storms of life. It doesn't mean the storm's not coming, but if your roots are deep, if your foundation is sure, you're going to stand after the storm blows through. So it's imperative that we go deep. Brother Jason, if I could get a little help. When you look at the early church from the book of Acts, you will, you will find out that that book of Acts church that early church, they went deep when it came to the Spirit. One of the ways that they were deep was they were deep in the Word of God. They had an affinity for the Word. They cherished the Word of God. 
They continued daily in the temple, the Bible says. They went from house to house, breaking bread, sharing uh, meals together, but also breaking the bread of life together. The Bible says they continued in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't just continue in a good old Holy Ghost experience like happened on the day of Pentecost. They wanted the Spirit, but they wanted truth as well. So they continued in the teaching. They continued in the doctrine because they understood that it wasn't enough just to believe any old thing. You need to believe the right things. You need to believe doctrine and truth. And so they continued in what the apostles taught them and lived and demonstrated to them. In Acts 5, it says that they filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. So the early church was deep when it came to the Word of God. But not only were they deep when it came to the Word of God, but they were deep in the Spirit. We see in the New Testament miracles and signs and wonders were the norm for that early apostolic church. Acts 2 and 43 says that many wonders and many signs were done through the apostles. Acts 5 and 12 tells us that through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done amongst the people. Then later in that same book, but in the fifth chapter of Acts, it relates that simply the shadow of Peter falling on people as he walked by calls them to be healed. Praise God. In Acts 6 and 8, it talks about how Stephen, who was not apostle, an apostle, but still Stephen did great wonders and he did great signs amongst the people. Then in Acts 8, multitudes gathered in the city of Samaria and Philip preached Jesus to them. And when he preached Jesus to them, they saw miracles done at the hand of Philip. Acts 14 and 3 says signs and wonders were done by the hands of Paul and Barnabas. Then in Acts 15 and 12, we read about many miracles and many wonders that God did through Paul and Barnabas. Acts 19 tells us that when when handkerchiefs or when aprons that were brought to the sick from the apostle Paul, that diseases left them, that evil spirits went out of them. I'm talking about a church that was deep. I'm talking about a church that was plugged in. I'm talking about a church that was connected to the Spirit. They had spiritual visions. They had dreams that happened regularly. And I I said at this in the first service today, but I've been getting phone calls. I've been having conversations with people. Hey, pastor, I had a dream, and I believe God's trying to tell me something. I had a vision, and I want to share it with you. I believe there's a resurgence of dreams and visions in this day. And if we will allow God to, he will give them to us. He will work in us and through us. The gifts of the Spirit, which I'll begin teaching about Wednesday night, those gifts, they operated freely and effectively in the early church. Listen, they were a deep church. And around this church, around the life church, we don't believe in just professing Christ. We don't believe in just accepting Him as our Savior. But we believe in the biblical promise of the infilling of his spirit and we believe that that promise is available not to a few but it is available to every single one of us if you are a believer today in this house if you are a believer watching online this promise this gift is available to you And because of the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we can possess, we can walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. We are not meant to be powerless Christians. We're not meant to be weak Christians. But he fills us with his spirit. He fills us with his power so that we can be powerhouses, so that he can work in us and through us to accomplish his will and his work. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost today, then you should operate in the spirit and you should be an ambassador of Jesus Christ every single day of your life. Oh, come on, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for a restoration of the power of God in the church in 2021. 
Come on, I'm hungry to see what they saw and to experience what they experienced in the Life Church in North Dallas. I wonder, is there anybody else who's hungry for that? I wonder if there's anybody else who's ready to dig a little bit deeper than we've been digging. You've got to know today that our, our world is sick and our world is in need of a demonstration of the Spirit of God. Our world has problems that they can't solve, but our God can. Hallelujah. Our world has addictions that they can't banish, but God can. This world has burdens that are too heavy for them to bear, but God wants to get under that yoke with them and help them bear that burden. And these kind of things, though, you've got to know are not going to happen through a surface level, superficial, and shallow church. What this world needs is not human abilities. It's not anything we can accomplish in the, in, the, in the physical. The Bible says it's not by might and it's not by power, but it is by His Spirit. Somebody worship the Lord right now. God, we need your Spirit. We need your Spirit. Help us to tap in. Hallelujah. Mark 16, read it just a moment ago, verse 17. Jesus said, true believers are going to be deep. True believers go beyond the surface. True, true believers are going to dig down a little bit. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. Sometimes we get it backwards. And we start following signs. That's not the way it happens. We're not supposed to say, oh, this is happening over here. Oh, that's happening over there. And I, oh, this, this, this minister, that, that, that televangelist. No. We don't follow signs. Signs are supposed to follow us. And if signs aren't following us, then we ought to take inventory. If the kind of signs that we read about in the Bible are not following us, then we need to ask some questions. Why is that not happening with me? Why is that not taking place in our church? And then when we get the answer to the question, don't point the finger at somebody else. Why don't you get busy being the solution? Why don't you get busy trying to correct whatever needs to be corrected and let it start with yourself? Yeah. We don't follow signs. Signs are supposed to follow us. What kind of signs? In my name, they're going to cast out demons. They're going to speak with new tongues. They're going to take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They're going to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to see them recover. Listen, in that first church, in that book of Acts church, demons were cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I ask today, why not now? Why not? Why, why not here? Why not today? If there's a demon that's crazy enough to have hung around this long, why not today? Hallelujah. I believe somebody can be liberated today. I believe that if you are influenced, if you are bound, if you are held captive, I believe you can be loosed in the name of Jesus today. I believe you can be delivered in the name of Jesus today. Oh, hallelujah, that New Testament church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they spoke with other tongues. They spoke languages they had never learned before. And I've got news for you that if you're here in this place today and you've never received that gift, it is for you and it's for your children. It's for those who are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And if they received it then, why not now? Paul was bitten by a serpent. He did not die. 
They laid hands on the sick and they recovered because they were a deep and a powerful church. So I believe that today, even while I am preaching, if you need a miracle in your life, right now, even while I'm speaking, if you need to be liberated, if you need to be set free, if you will just begin to call on the name of Jesus right where you are, if you'll just begin to pray and invite the influence of God into your life, He can meet you right where you are. Oh, come on, church. Would you pray with me right now? Come on, would you release God's power right now? Would somebody call on the name of Jesus right now? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, you know who is here. Lord, you know every difficulty. You know every struggle. Lord, you know every burden. You know every spirit of anxiety. God, you know every question, every doubt, and every fear. And we come against it by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and in obedience to the Word of God. Show yourself mighty today, God. Show yourself mighty. Stretch forth your hand today. Oh, somebody worship the Lord for a moment. Somebody worship the Lord for a moment. Come on, maybe it's been a while since you've been in the presence of God. Why don't you take advantage of this opportunity right now? Oh, hallelujah. Maybe you've been burdened down. Maybe you've been weighted down. Why don't you take advantage of this moment? The presence of God is here. The power of God is here. Why don't you dig down a little bit? Why don't you go deep a little bit right now? Why don't you push past your flesh and tap into the Spirit? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody willing to go deep in the spirit right now? Is anybody ready to launch off into the deep? Come on. The river's flowing. The river's flowing. The river of the spirit is flowing right now, but you've got to tap into it. Hallelujah. You've got to, you've got to welcome it. You've got to receive it. You've got to want it. Mm, Jesus, 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 have your way. Let shackles fall. Lord, let chains fall in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I come against any evil spirit in this place. You've got to go in Jesus' name. I come against any spirit of Antichrist in this place. You've got to go in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Be loose today. Find freedom in the Lord today. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for showing up in this place. Thank you for being true to your word. Thank you for confirming your word. Lord, as we exercise faith that you respond to that, you show up, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this might not be pretty, but that's okay. It, 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 all, it all will be worth it if one person receives what they need from God today. If one person's life is transformed today, it doesn't matter what it looks like, what it sounds like, or what questions you may have in your mind. If one person is healed, it will all be worth it. If one person is set free, it will all be worth it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's linger a moment longer. Hallelujah, I'm going to preach in just a minute, but let's linger a moment longer. Oh, have your way, God. Have your way amongst us, Lord Jesus. Mm, Lord, we want to be sensitive to you. We want to be sensitive to what you're doing, to what you want to do. We want to give you open access, Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That early church was a deep church. That early church was a powerful church. And I want you to know that is my vision for this church, that we would go deep into the things of God, that we would possess the same power that they possessed. Amen. If it's available to us, why don't we take advantage of it? If God says, hey, there's some weapons, there's some tools that you can have, there's some things that we find in his word, why, why would we put them on the sideline? Why, why would we embrace them and want everything that God has for us? Us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can continue to pray, but I'm going to preach a little bit. You see, the early church was not just deep, just for the sake of being deep. In other words, that, that wasn't the end game. That wasn't the only motivation just to be deep for deep sake. We find that that early church was deep for a reason. Their spiritual depth was connected to their mission. Miracles were not an end unto themselves. Understand what I'm saying. Yes, miracles were and still are God's way of validating the message of the gospel. And we believe that signs should follow us as a believer. But let me say it like this. The early church was deep so they could go wide. There was a reason they went deep. There was a reason they had a strong and solid foundation. There was a reason they tapped into the things of the spirit. They were deep so they could go wide. In the Great Commission passages, we find in the New Testament, Jesus gave the church their mission. Mark 16, 15 and 16 says this, and he said to them, here's your mission, go. Go, don't stay. Don't, don't get in the temple and stay there. Don't get in your home and stay there, but go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That was their mandate. Don't keep the good news to yourself, but share it far and share it wide. Then he went on to say in verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. If you look through the Gospels, you'll find a similar theme repeated in Matthew and Luke and to a lesser degree, the book of John. But let me say it one more time. The reason that the early church was deep was so that they would have the power to go wide. Just prior to Jesus' ascension back into heaven, he said this. This is his last words recorded in the gospel. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Why do we talk about the Holy Ghost so much? Because Jesus says you get power when you get the Holy Ghost. Why, why wouldn't we talk about that? If Jesus says it's available, if he says it's a promise to anyone, and if he says that when we get it, it, come, it brings power to us, why wouldn't we want that? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But what is the purpose of that power? Look at the rest of that verse. Here it is. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. In other words, in your hometown. You're supposed to be a witness in your hometown. But don't stop there. Judea needs to hear the gospel as well. And so does Samaria. But don't even stop at Samaria. Take it to the uttermost part of the earth. 
So today I want you to know that I'm talking about power, yes, but I'm talking about power with a purpose. I'm talking about power that propelled the preaching of the gospel to the whole world. So today I pray, God, help us to go deep like the early church went deep so we can go wide like the early church went wide. Let, let me tell you how the early church went wide. In Acts, the second chapter, in one day, 3,000 souls were saved in one day. They, they'd, been, they'd been in that upper room for 10 days doing what? Going deep. They'd been seeking. They'd been tarrying. They'd been waiting. They were doing the hard work that ushers in revival. They'd been laying the groundwork that births revival. 10 long, arduous, taxing, tiring days. They had prayed. They'd sought the face of God. They'd set their focus on going deep. And then when the Holy Ghost came, what happened? Revival broke out. And they went from going deep to going wide. And 3,000 people were added to the kingdom that day. In Acts 5, multitudes of believers were added to the church. As I said earlier, Acts 5 goes on to tell us that they filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. They didn't keep it to themselves. They, they, they got it outside the walls of the temple and they filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. Then in Acts 6, it says, the number of the disciples multiplied greatly and a great many of priests were obedient to the faith. Acts 8, because of the persecution that came to the Christians, the believers were scattered. And what did they do when they scattered? They went everywhere preaching the word of God. What was their mission that Jesus delivered? He said, hey, get up and go and go everywhere. Go to everyone and preach the gospel. That was their mission. Go everywhere. Preach the word to everyone. And I want this church to know today that that remains our mission. We are not a closed community at the Life Church. We are not a secret society at the Life Church. We are not a country club for the comfortable at the Life Church. No, we have a mission. We have a mandate to go everywhere and preach and share the gospel with everyone. That's why when we can't go, we give. You can't go to South America? That's okay, give so somebody else can go to South America. You can't go to the continent of Africa? That's okay. Why don't you give so that somebody else can go? That's how we partner with this great commission. Hey, we're going we're gonna to reach to Jerusalem. We're going to reach to the cities around where we live, but we're going to help others go to Chicago, and we're going to help others go to Los Angeles, and we're going to help others go to Europe. Hallelujah. That's why on a monthly basis around here, we remind the church we have a mission. We call it Mission Sunday, the third Sunday of every month, so that we can give, so the gospel can be shared around the globe. Listen to me. If we want to be a blessed church, then we need to be a blessing to the work of the kingdom. So let me bring it down to us, to right where we are. Let me level with you for just a moment. COVID-19 has affected our culture. And I'll take that a step further and say that COVID-19 has affected the church to a degree. We went from being connected to being disconnected. During the past 10 months, our unity was challenged. We went from being others focused to being inward focused. When all this news began to surface and all of these things began to be talked about in, in, in the media, what happened? Survival instincts begin to kick in. And so when survival instincts begin to kick in, what do you do in that moment? It's me first, right. not others first. Right. It's me first. 
But I want you to know that even though COVID has changed a lot of things in our culture and even some things in the church, there's one thing that has not changed, and that's the fact that our world desperately needs Jesus. And it's going to take a church that is digging deep, and it's going to take a church that is willing to go wide to introduce this world to Jesus. So hear me, Life Church. Now is not the time to pull back. Now is not the time to cloister. Now is not the time to trade in our mission. Now is not the time to be myopic and focused on our own problems. We need to tap into the depth that God is leading us to. We need to go deeper in prayer, deeper in the things of the Spirit, so we will have the power to go wide like never before. Hallelujah. As we go deep, I believe God will propel us to reach wider than we have in the past. He's going to propel you to reach out by offering to teach a Bible study to your coworker. He's going to help you reach wide by inviting somebody, inviting an acquaintance to join your life group. Praise God. He's going to help you to reach wide. The power is there if you'll just tap into it. We reach lot wide when we show the love of Jesus to everybody that we come in contact with. We reach wide by giving so that others can go. We have the gospel. We have the truth. We have the spirit. Let's not keep it to ourselves. When it comes to this virus that we're dealing with, let me tell you, we did what we had to do. We were very careful during the early months of this pandemic. There's so much at that time we, we didn't know. We didn't know what we were dealing with. And there were so many amongst us who were vulnerable that we needed to protect. And we still do. We still do. And I know that some people may be getting weary of some of the precautions. But listen, this virus isn't over yet. It's not been dealt with yet. I'm, I'm, I'm just as ready as you are. But here's what I know, and here's what I want to say to this church. Even though the virus is not over yet, I believe the time has come for us to put away some of the habits that we formed while we were having church in our pajamas. It's time for us to put away some of the habits, some of the things that we got used to when we're having church in the comfort of our own homes. Listen, it is time for us to shift from a consumer mentality to a distributor mentality. We don't just need to focus on what we need and what we can get and what we can receive, but we need to become a conduit for the Holy Ghost to flow through and flow out of us. He says it's like rivers of living water, and we need to share the river with others around us church it's time to re-engage the mission it's time for us to rise up and be bold in our witness it's time to reach someone with the gospel of Jesus Christ Oh, hallelujah. Maybe we like it better when we're talking about going deep, but this is part of it. Yes, we're going to go deep, but our deepness, our depth has a purpose. Praise God. Going deep isn't the end goal. The end goal is to take what we have and to share it with others. The end goal is not about ourself. It's not even really about what happens inside this building. It's about getting outside of the four walls. It's about re-engaging with our community. Praise God. The end goal is not going deep. The end goal is going wide. Hallelujah. I want you to know that I'm thankful for every baptism that we had in the nine, nine months of last year that we dealt with this virus and having to change service times and service plans and being online. But praise God, we were still baptizing people. 
Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for each and every one of them. And I, I'm thankful that even during the time of being online and, and in time of having limited services that we had several filled with the Holy Ghost. But I want you to know, and I'm putting you on notice, church, that I am believing for so much more moving forward. I thank God for what happened in first service today, but I'm not going to be content with that because there are people who are lost. There are people who are dying and on their way to hell and it's up to you and I to reach them. I'm believing God for a harvest as we press deeper that he's going to take us wider. Would you stand? I wonder if somebody could begin praying with me right now. I want God to confirm his word today. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you've not received the gift of the Holy Ghost, we're reaching for you. We're reaching for you. It's God's will for you. It's God's promise to you and you can experience that for yourself today. We're reaching for you. If you're here today and you're sick in your body, I want you to know we're reaching for you. We, we, we can lay hands on you and, and do it in a safe way, but we believe that you will recover in Jesus' name. It's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it's by the Spirit that flows through us. It's by the Spirit that works in us. The goal of this message today has been to hold up the mirror of God's word to our church. And the fact of the matter is that while we're seeing some good things and we need to be grateful for that and we need to celebrate every victory, we need to celebrate every win. We've seen some good things, but the fact of the matter is that we've still got our work cut out for us. There's still so much more. There's still so much more. Oh, we got excited couple years ago when we had to go to two services because we needed the space and now we have two services because I'm trying to give everybody a chance to space out a little bit got so excited two services two services church is growing two services we're not touching the tip of the iceberg there's so much more there are churches that needed to be planted in the cities around us, and we can help partner in that. We can add a third service if we need to. We're gonna bust that back wall out in Jesus' name. Why? Because there's souls that are worth saving. Because there's people who need to know the love of Jesus Christ just like you and I know and experience the love of Jesus Christ. We have a lost world to reach and we have the power of the gospel to do it. We've been going deep and we're going to continue to go deep. I believe signs are going to follow like they have never before. We're not going to follow the signs, but I believe signs are going to follow us as you get bold, as you begin to step out of your comfort zone, as you begin to be moved by compassion for the hurting and the lost and say, hey, can I teach you a Bible study? Hey, can I pray with you over that situation? Hey, can I serve you in some way? I believe the signs are going to follow when we begin doing the work that the Spirit intends for us to do. Signs are going to follow. We're going to keep going deep, but it's also time. It's also time that we go wide. Quit waiting, church. Quit holding back. Quit, think, quit thinking, hey, when everything gets back to normal, when we don't have to wear these masks anymore, when we don't have to social distance anymore, no, there are people that are hurting right now. Can you hear their silent cry? There are people that you work with and they might look like they've got it all together on the outside, but on the inside they're dying. We've got to take Jesus to them. We've got to take Jesus to them. 
We've got to take Jesus to Jerusalem. We've got to take him to Judea. We've got to take him to Samaria. We've got to be a part of taking him to the uttermost part of the earth. We've got to take Jesus to our office. We've got to take him to our schools. And we've got to take him to our colleges. You've got to take him to your PTA meetings, to the parks, and to the playgrounds. Wherever you go, you got to take Jesus with you. Would you lift your hands and let's just begin to pray that God would use us. Come on, you could be the answer to somebody's prayer today. Somebody may be waiting on someone to share the gospel with them and you could be the answer to the prayer they're praying. God, take us deep. So when we get the opportunity to go wide, we'll do it, Lord. Lord, take us deep in your word. Take us deep in the spirit, Lord, so that we'll be more aware than ever before of the needs of those around us. God, who are searching and who are seeking and who are hungry for you. God, I pray that you would mobilize us for ministry like never before. Oh, God. This altar's open if you want to respond to the word. Hey! 
Can we be sensitive to that? Hallelujah. Can we be sensitive to that? There are people who are praying prayers of desperation right now. Hallelujah. Let's go deep. Let's go deep so God can take us wide. In the name of Jesus, I believe he wants to confirm his word today if we'll just allow him. If we'll just tap into the flow of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. If you have a need, begin to pray right now. If you need a fresh touch of God's Spirit in your life, begin to pray right now. Open yourself to the Lord. Open yourself to what God has for you. Oh, there's no place I'd rather be.
Hallelujah. This is sweet Kaylee Duncan. And we're proud of her. She received the Holy Ghost. She has a hunger for God. And I'm thankful for her mom and dad getting her in church and getting her in, in a kid's service where she could be exposed to the, to the message at a level where she could receive it, be impacted by it. Speaking of that, I'm so thankful for our Kids Life Ministry team, all of you who invest week in and week out. Brother Connor recently taught a, a lesson on baptism, and we're seeing the fruit of that, and kids saying, hey, I'm ready to identify with Jesus. I, I'm ready to identify with his death, burial, and resurrection, and baptism, such an important part of that as I preach today. We're getting ready to baptize her. She's already received the gift of the Holy Ghost, so we're going to baptize her, and when she comes out, She's going to raise her hands and rejoice, and I think we ought to all do that. How about that? Yeah. All right. Kaylee Dungan, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to the Word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Can the church say in Jesus' name? You ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Worship you today, God. When the Spirit of the Lord is very sweet, very sweet on me. When the Spirit of the Lord is very sweet, very sweet on me. Out of the dark, just as you are, to the fullness of His love. When the Spirit for being